So today I'm going to show you one of my favourite rigs and this is called a Portsmouth rig, sometimes called a Cascade dropper, dropper rig. It's very streamlined as you can see, it's going to cast a long long distance but when it all unhooks we've got a lovely long snood um, hook with your bait pinned nicely to the bottom of the seabed. So this is with it all connected and set up. When this weight hits the seabed, what it will do is it will release this hook. And then once this hook releases, it will pull against this SRT spring, which is already loaded while um, it's casting. And because it's loaded against the SRT spring, when this hits the seabed, it will quite happily ping off. And this is part to do with the SRT spring. It's preloaded to ping off as soon as it, it hits that seabed. And then you'll notice that this bottom snood now is going to be very, very hard on the bottom seabed. And you can have this as long or as short as you want. This particular version of this Portsmouth rig is actually a long version. So in this particular case, I've got this length here, which goes to the top of the cascade swivel. Let will show you that. That's, I believe, um, 20 inches. And then I've got a further 22 inches to the hook. So this is a really long one. I don't normally make them this long, but I like to have the choice of having a long one or a short one. Um, just for there for uh, the choice. So now I'm going to talk about how we actually set this up. So for this particular one, it's a longer one, as I've already mentioned, it's 49 inch rig body. And the top snood, I generally try to keep around about 20 inches. So this is the top snood. This one is 22 inches to the eye of this hook. It's 25 inches when we get to the actual hook bottom itself. So it's a little bit longer than normal. I normally make sure that by the time it gets to the hook bottom here, it's normally around about 20 to 22 inches maximum. But as I said um, a few times now, this is a, a slightly longer trace than normal for different situations. You'll notice I've got the panel set up. This is simply just um, put through the eye of this hook and it's wrapped around a few times around the line just to keep it in place. The reason why I primarily normally use this panel setup is because I like to have the bait presentation looking good on the seabed or when it's um, flowing with the uh, the current. It makes sure that the the top of the lugworm is, is pinned where it should be and the bottom stays where it should be. For live lug you can get away with not having that on there normally but certainly for frozen lug or or lug that's quite limp you're going to end up with a mash of lug at the bottom here if you haven't got this set up um, yeah so that's really it and this srt spring is just simply comprising of a, a crimp a bead a swivel a bead the srt spring and then a bead and then another crimp and then of course this swivel is where this top snood is connected to. And um, these swivels can actually take quite a bit of poundage, actually. I can't remember what this is, but it's more than what I'm going to be catching um, in the sea, for sure. So when we come down to the bottom end of this, we've again got a quite simple setup. Um, do ignore the fact that I've actually got this crimp right hard on the knot. It's not normally there. I think it just needed a little bit more tighter crimping because um, it's basically, when I caught a bass, it's actually pulled it down to the bottom there. So I just need to loosen this up and put it up a little bit higher. Now, when it comes to the, uh, the bottom here, this is very important. I've got this bait clip with this downturned hook. If you've got normal leads like I have, then you want to have this on there. The next part of it, is setting up the right length between this hook here 
and this bait clip. And what I mean by this, the right length, is it's this part of this um, snud length at the bottom there. So what we what we tend to do is we tend to not have this part at the top here connected when we're setting this up. We will just have this uh, cascade swivel with this little hook on it, as you can see. And then we will we'll measure out the length until we get to the bottom of the hook. And this is basically what happens. We will hook this little tiny hook on there like that. And then this will then go down. I'm trying to do this with one hand, which isn't easy, but I should be able to do it. Okay. We get to the bottom here, and then we've got this bait clip, and this is where the hook goes onto this bait clip. And once this is clipped on, and we've got the tension right against the, uh, the SRT spring at the top, it should be pulling on the SRT spring, not fully but it should be pulling on it and then it would be time to connect this part of the snud here this this is the loop part of the snud remembering at this point we've already got this connected here this this one here going to the hook length at the bottom okay that's connected here and then we just have to measure a slightly longer piece of uh, amnesia this is 20 pound amnesia in this particular case just to go to this the top part of this cascade swivel and we don't want it tight because otherwise it's going to turn that up like that and then it will slip off so we want to have it loose enough and then uh, it goes down you see it's got a bit of slack there it's going down and it's connecting to this swivel so that's how it's connected so the swivel goes and connects to the top part of this cascade swivel at the top there but the tension is connected to the bottom this piece I'm holding on to now that's where the tension is to the hook at the end we go down and there you go and that's how it's made so I tend to put a smaller hook on the bottom if I'm going to be after all the, the species of flatfish like Dover sole, um, I would use a smaller hook, obviously, size four, size six. Then um, I may put a size one O on there if I'm targeting um, dabs, flounder, place, etc. So you can choose what hook you want on there. Because I've set this one up specifically to try to get both species, either a bass or a flatfish, I will tend to have a ultimate uh, bass hook made by Mustard. They're fantastic hooks. If you use these hooks, then you're likely to keep your bass on there. Incidentally, the other night I actually caught a bass on this very rig that you're seeing now. Um, this bass was a fighter and it did tangle up this rig a little bit. So I took this rig off and put another rig on, another Portsmouth rig, but the other Portsmouth rig didn't have the ultimate bass hook on. And lo and behold, I was onto another bass. It was a slack liner and I lost it because I didn't use this. I'm sure it was because of that. So... Um, Something to keep in mind. Oh, well, that is getting heavy. That normally doesn't um, get 
cut wobble like that. You have to cut and have a rig on. I'm onto another slack liner. I actually saw the line go suddenly slack. Actually took it quite quick as well. When you get these slack liners, they're normally very distinctive. And of course, unless you've got your line very tight against the grip lead, you won't know you've got a slack liner. But once you start winding it in fast, you will eventually catch up with it and it becomes heavy. Took the, took the bait. It took the bait. There's some decent sized fish out there. This one actually felt heavier than the previous one, but in this particular case, I wasn't using one of the uh, Ultima Bass because I had to change my rig for another rig. And the Ultima Bass hooks by Mustard, they're definitely really good hooks. And um, had I used one, I believe I would have actually had a second bass. Overall, this is the go-to rig for myself. I'm always gonna be putting this on my main beach casting rod is um, one for getting distance.